Greetings, ladies and mandelgents, and welcome to this narration of the web novel Humans Don't Make Good Familiars, taken from Reddit with the author's approval. If you're new to the series, there is a playlist in the description. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Chapter 6 Okay, Jake, are you ready? Suma asked. Ready, I told her. Suma then bowed her head and spread her wings with the tips pointed to the sky. A glowing, multicolored magic circle formed on a golden floor around each of our feet and began to twist and match the shapes of our shadows. Soon, I felt a kind of heaviness on my soul that nearly fell to my knees, but managed to steady myself and power through. The weight suddenly vanished, and I heard a voice echoing inside my mind. It was far away at first, and I couldn't make out the words, but soon it boomed like thunder. A name is required. A name, I asked aloud. Suma looked at me questioningly. Did you hear that, Jake? She had sounded confused or maybe scared. Without warning, a small ember began to glow in the floor. It radiated in a brilliant display of light until it nearly exploded into a roaring inferno between Suma and myself. A name is required. The flaming figure bellowed. There were several large birds and their animals in the room with us, and each of them stepped back at the sight of this creature. I, uh, I, I am Jake, I yelled out, but the figure ignored me and turned to Suma. She looked at me and turned back to the figure and shouted, His, his name is Sentinel, Great One. The figure faded back into an ember and the burning pain shot through my shoulder. Ah! I yelped and lifted up my sleeve to see that a magic circle, surrounded by some kind of alien letters, had been etched into my skin like a tattoo. I looked down at the floor, and the magic circles faded away to nothing, leaving the room filled with an eerie quiet. What the heck was that? I asked, breaking the rest of the room's occupants out of their own stupors. I have no idea, Zuma replied meekly. End of chapter Part 6 I lay down in my bed that night, unable to sleep. The image of the flaming figure was burned into my mind and would not let me rest. I had asked Soma about it, and she had asked some of the other officials from the temple, but no one had any answers. I thought back to our conversation after we had left the temple. We were both shaken and concerned. How did you know what it meant when it asked you for a name? I asked Suma. Flattering beside me, she landed on the shoulder that now bore the strange tattoo. I, um, I just had a feeling. I don't know how to explain it. All I know is that repairing worked. I can now summon you whenever I need, and we can talk to each other between worlds, Suba said. How do you know? Is it the tattoo thing? I asked, pointing at my free hand at the marking. Yes, she nodded her head. Can I ask you something? Why did you choose the name Sentinel? Oh, better yet. Where did you even hear that word? I wondered. Sentinel? It means great one. I thought it fitting, she said. My world is that word too, you know. It basically means guardian or watchers, I told her. Then I was right. It does fit, she said. It had been hours since Suma sent me back to my world, propping me right back in the middle of my kitchen. I checked my watch as soon as I arrived, and then checked the alarm clock in my room. There was a massive difference between the two. I'd been gone for two or so hours, but according to the clock in my room, no time had passed. Thoughts kept racing through my mind. How am I supposed to beat something like a Borag if I'm not armed? What if I'm summoned to fight in a war and I get someone killed because I'm not strong enough? I stayed awake all night trying to answer these questions and more. But the only conclusion I came up with was this. I can never be caught with my pants down. I began researching how to fight different kinds of animals and the best ways to treat wounds in as many circumstances as I could think of. I made lists of supplies from everything from first aid to close quarters combat that was legal to own in my country. Shy of moving to America, where I could probably buy an AK-47 at Walmart, I needed to sure fire way to deal with as many situations as possible. My eventual conclusion was that I needed something that I could quickly convert into a weapon after I was summoned or learn how to manufacture the weapon in the other world so that I could keep it there. The conversion seemed easier, so I pulled a 3D modeling program to help me design it. The sunlight poured into my room from the outside just as I put the finishing touches on my design. In the course of four hours, I had gone through seven ideas and attempted to build mock versions of them out of what I had lying around. 
I decided on what was essentially a kind of folding knife that could attach to a collapsible rod. I looked at my clock and decided that I could finish my project later, since it was my day off of work. Just as I laid down to sleep, I heard Suma's voice in my head. I summon you, Sentinel. A magic circle formed in my bed around my body, and I slowly began to disappear. I reached out and grabbed my pajama shirt and trousers just before my hand disappeared. End of chapter. Just a quick shout out to the T5 peeps. Bob the Dragon, Cat Crab Lobster, Data Magnet, Dark Machine, Bezik, Try Again 95, Feudic Yol, Ashtraya the Dreamer, Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Athelia, Meridian 117, and Jordan Buxmorm. Thank you very much. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. There are links down below both to support this channel and for the author of this fiction. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.